Good afternoon, my name is Andy Daly-Smith and thank you very much for the invite to talk about physical activity and health in childhood, moving beyond elastoplast initiatives to whole school approaches. I'd just like to begin by looking at the brain and specifically talking about the brain's ability to change in response to experience and how this is high within the foundational years and early educational years before beginning to decrease as a child goes through primary and elementary into the high school phase and reducing further into adulthood. Opposite to that, we have the amount of effort required to make such change. And as you can see, this is low within the early foundational years and primary or elementary years, but starts to increase as children leave school. So it's so important that we invest in early childhood and start to build positive behavioral habits, not just for physical activity, but actually broader health and well-being outcomes. So why do I think we're potentially in the mess that we are? Why do we have soaring obesity rates that we've just seen within the UK? Uh, rates have gone up by 4% in both reception and year six, which is the last year of primary school, increasing mental health problems. Well, for me, there is a real tension between the big E of education and what education expects of our children and young people and how that system has evolved to create such pressures and the small H of health, and how much we prioritize these within our educational system within the 21st century. So why are we failing? Well, it comes down to a leaky bucket scenario. We keep dropping interventions into the top of the bucket, but the health is just dissipating through these different holes. And we start to put elastoplast initiatives over these holes to start, try and stop the water from flowing out. So a good example within the UK at the moment is the Daily Mile Initiative. While on its own, it might look like a fantastic programme to increase physical activity, actually it's just another elastoplast that isn't built into the infrastructure of the school. It's not changing the organisational structure and culture to embed physical activity at the heart of what the school does. So hence, when the elastoplast becomes wet, it just starts to fall off. Also, there's this need or sort of history of interventions between being driven by research-based push approaches. So researchers thinking what the next great idea is, looking at the effectiveness of that, and then implementing it within schools without a real true understanding of the school ecosystem. And there's policy-based pull approaches where policy asks for a certain thing. So a good example would be in Denmark and some of the colleagues that we're working with over there when Denmark introduced a requirement for children to achieve, I think it was 45 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity a day, and that was written into policy, there was a real scrambling in the system of, well, how do we achieve that? And it's only now that the system is starting to realign um, and the stakeholders are starting to come together. So what's the way forward? Well, it's an interaction between the key stakeholder groupings. We must come together to co-develop our whole school approaches to physical activity and health and well-being. And as you can see, in terms of the International Society for Physical Activity and Health, whole school, school programmes are one of their eight best investments where we can get the highest return on the money that we spend. So what would that look like in terms of physical activity? Well, this is some of the work that we've been doing within Bradford and more widely within the UK, where we came together with 50 stakeholders from different areas of health and education, whether it be policymakers, teachers, head teachers, researchers, uh, practitioners who worked in the sports fields, to co-design a whole school physical activity framework. So at fir first we could understand what the different components were that need to be addressed. More recently, we've been working with schools within Bradford to identify um, how do we start to implement this framework? And what we've been asked for is a profiling tool. So we now have a website where schools go onto the website and they profile their school against their policy, their stakeholders, their environments, and finally the opportunities they provide for physical activity. So all of this is knitting together to introduce evidence-led practitioner approaches, rather than what we tend to see in schools in UK around physical activity, which is, what's the school down the road doing, which is not always the most evidence-based or evidence-driven uh, intervention implementation. 
So moving forward, what we would like to do in Bradford, while physical activity is one very small part of health and well-being, we'd like to broaden this work to create a, a creating healthy schools framework that takes into all the different components of health and well-being and how we might integrate these within schools. We're doing this by bringing all of our partners together and we're at the beginning of this journey and we definitely haven't got it right yet. There is a long way for us to go to truly in a position, be in a position where we can say we've co-produced our whole school approach to health and well-being. But what's exciting is the people around the table have the appetite to create a new future with combining health and education. So finally, for me, it comes down to it's time to change the bucket. We need to stop putting short term initiatives in place to cover the gaps and the issues that have been created by an educational system that has formed over the last 20, 30 years and focus finally on the holistic development to help children thrive and become adults who can make a positive contribution to a 21st century society.